What's up, party people? It's Dan, your basement guitar superstar. Welcome to another episode of Creator Hangout. And I am with Johnny Edwards from Budget Guitar Show. Johnny, say hi for me. Hi, guys. How you all doing out there? Yeah, actually, let's do it this way. Let's do uh, make your face from your intro. All oh, right, yeah. Okay. Here's Johnny. Awesome. Cool. So, Johnny, talk to me about, before we go into the channel and all that, talk to me about how you got started playing music. Because it, it, based on your skill level, I would assume you've been playing for a while now, right? Um, yeah, yeah, I have. Um, originally, I sort of started out messing around with guitar when I was very young, because my father, uh, back in the 60s and 70s, he was a, a performer. And uh, he basically used to imitate people like Al Jolson, uh, Nat King Cole and things like that. You know, you, you can't really do it now. But he used to black up and, you know, and do all of that. Um, and I got my love of music from him, uh, the 50s and 60s uh, stuff that he would play, the 40s, even the 30s. Um, uh, so music's always been around, you know, uh, in my life. And um, I sort of um, discovered this band called the Sex Pistols and punk rock. And as a little skinny ginger kid, you know, who was always getting bullied at school and everything. This was a catalyst for me. Um, and I saw Johnny Rotten and I thought, I want to be him. I really want to be that guy. Um, so I uh, got into tribute bands um, as Johnny Rotten. Nice. And uh, that was where that, that kind of started really for me. Um, and what then, years are we talking, Johnny? Uh, th this is, um, I'm talking 98 when we formed, 1998. We were the first uh, sort of Sex Pistols tribute band um, uh, in, uh, this, in Britain. There was one in Scotland just before us, but that was, that was pantomime stuff, you know. Sure. Um, and we were absolutely deadly serious, uh, the Sussex Pistols. And we got played and liked by... Johnny Rotten himself nice. and I realized I was being ripped off <laughs> much like the original Johnny Rotten was uh, so that went out the door and then I formed a band called the Essex Pistols doing much the same thing um, but at a couple of gigs uh, the guitarist couldn't make it so I actually strapped on a guitar and started playing and singing and from there on in, um, that finished. Uh, from there on in, I went to a couple of friends' bands, you know, um, playing guitar. And we used to take old uh, songs and change them up and do them in a different way. Um, and then I ended up in a band for 10 years, which played at motorsport circuits here in the UK. Um, places like Silverstone and I I would dress up as Ozzy Osbourne nice. <laughs> and, and do Paranoid and things like that and then I'd take all that garb off play a few songs on guitar and then come out as Johnny Rotten and do a bit of that you know um, and then uh, a friend of mine said about the the band that I'm in now uh, he said oh I really want to do some old like crampsy style rock and roll and I said yeah yeah I'd be up for that so we formed this band called Voodoo Club and over the years now, it's been about uh, 12 years, I think, and it's changed now into a punk rock covers band. So, of course, I play guitar for that. Um, but my, my music um, influences are very, very wide ranging. Obviously, I love my rock. I love my punk. Uh, I like uh, 80s metal. Um, but I also love, um, and a big artist for me is a, a woman called Twinkle from the 1960s, uh, who used to write her own song. She had a big hit with uh, a song called Terry. Okay. Uh, I don't know whether you've heard of that, but um, oh, I've fantastic. Never, I've never heard the name before. I'll have to check her out. Yeah, uh, she, she was absolutely fantastic. Um, and I absolutely love her stuff. Um, but yeah, I go all the way back to the 
rock and roll, Buddy Holly, uh, Richie Valance, uh, things like that. Sure. Sure. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. You, I noticed you said something in there, your guitarist couldn't make it one gig. So you strapped on a guitar where you play, did you start out playing bass or something then, or how did that work? Um, no, I, I was the vocalist. Oh, okay. I see. But I, I messed around on guitar. I mean, I, I used to, there's a, a couple of punk albums. There's obviously never mind the bollocks. And there's another great one by a band called the anti nowhere league called we are the league and those albums even if you know not very much about the guitar that album particularly the anti nowhere league one you could play it within 20 minutes of yeah. listening to it and that's the whole album um so i'd been messing about on on guitars i had this very cheap uh encore guitar and it was um it had a devil with a pitchfork uh, painted on it and uh which i think it, it cost my mother 65 pounds at the time which was uh and i'm talking now this was about 92 93 when she bought me that so and it was a lot of money for us back then um and so i had that and i'd been playing along with my punk albums the ramones the clash so i knew certain songs but i didn't know um you know, I, I couldn't go out into the big wide world and play a gig on guitar with any other band other oh. than the stuff that I knew how to play. Sure. Now, do you still have that guitar then? No, no, I don't. Uh, that got sold uh, many, 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 many years ago. Um, I do have a photograph of it um, because one band I was in um, called the Teddy Dildo Band. <laughs> and you can guess what that was like. <laughs> um, but we, uh, I, I used to use it in the, the sessions. This was, this was it just before uh, um, we actually formed the Sex Pistols tribute. And um, it, it didn't end up going anywhere, but uh, it was, I used it then. And I have a photograph of our bass player playing it while the drummer has his drumsticks up his nose <laughs> and i obviously took the photo <laughs> um but I, i've never seen another one at all of those oh, it, are we talking encore that eventually became vintage the brand or is this yeah, a totally separate them. brand yeah that, that that's them that's them yeah uh, cool because i i love vintage stuff especially when they were started working with trev wilkinson yeah, I saw. I saw um, you. You had the uh, the silver limited edition. Yeah, I actually have all three of the first first ones. Well, there's that that guitar that you had. It reminded me. There's a company uh, that makes. Uh, I don't know if they're British, but um, they make uh, budget guitars here uh, called um, Rockburn. Okay. And they they have one which is identical to that. I always see it in secondhand shops. Um, but uh, yeah, that that they have one identical to that. I don't know whether Rockburn is another arm to vintage or anything, but uh, they're very similar. They might be distributed by JHS because it seems like John Hornsby Skews is a huge distributor and has like a bajillion brands under him. So yeah. it wouldn't surprise me one bit. So. Which part of the UK are you from then? Because I've been to Norfolk area in London. Yeah. Um, well, I'm, I'm from a, a town called Redditch, which um, those Led Zeppelin fans might know, uh, the home of John Bonham. Okay. Um, but uh, now I live um, in, in South Birmingham uh, in a place called Kings Norton. Um, but yeah, I'm from Redditch, which is the, the Midlands. It's all South Birmingham area. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that's where I'm from. But I did for a while live in, uh, in your country over there, uh, oh, yeah. in the good old US of A. Uh, I lived in uh, near Seattle for a while in a, a place called uh, Graham in Washington. Okay, what brought you over here? Just uh, a, a woman. A woman, oh, okay. <laughs> um, and yeah, I, I lived there for a couple of years uh, and tried to get some kind of band together. I was uh, working for uh, a magazine over there called Punk Globe uh, okay. at the time as well, and uh, doing some writing for them. 
Um, but yeah, tried tried to get a band together over there. It didn't really happen. Um, and then things went sort of a, things went bad. So I yeah, came back to England. Cool. So um, talk to me about your channel then, because it looks like you've been around kind of a uh, little less than I have. I think you, you're about 10 months in now, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, basically, uh, the, the inspiration for the channel was uh, Mike at CGS, um, because I, uh, I've been watching him for years, and I uh, was looking at buying, back then, uh, the uh, Chinese copy of the Steve Jones Sex Pistols guitar. Oh, sure. And I discovered his channel, and he was saying, look, don't buy them. Don't, you know, don't bother with them. They're, they're awful. So I, I didn't. And I ended up getting one of those made for me uh, by a friend um, out of a, an encore. But we put the proper Gibson pickups in it, 70s pickups. And um, during this lockdown, when all this started, I was watching all of the guitar channels and stuff. And I just thought, you know, I, I, I want to go. I want to see what will happen. So um, I ordered a, a Glarry guitar and decided to review it. And then that needed a follow-up video. And it just sort of carried on from there, really. Um, I, I know it's not the best channel in the world and it probably never, ever will be. But it's just something to do because I am a, a disabled person. I have severe arthritis in my hands. I have uh, mental issues uh, and things like that. It's something to occupy my time when my band isn't out gigging or during the day. Um, just something to do, you know. Sure. sure. So that, that's, that's how that started. And it, I mean, it, so far you've covered budget gear specifically, it looks like. Now, how many yeah. donations have you gotten from, from viewers so far? Because I know you were doing that for a little bit. Yeah, um, I, I do encourage my viewers, if they have something that they're not using or they think, oh, review this, uh, you know, try that, uh, then I'll say, yep, I'll, I'll take it and I'll either I'll review it and then I'll either do a giveaway with it or keep it or I might auction it for a charity or something. Um, but so far I've had... Um, one uh, guitar that's been donated, which uh, is the red one just there. Sure. And I've had that's a Harley Benton. And I've had a couple of pedals uh, donated um, and a small practice amp. Um, but that, that's about it for donations so far. But I do have uh, a couple more that I have to uh, speak to the guy who's donating them about uh, getting them shipped to me. Um, but um, I'm going to see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I'm I'm always open to things like that. Um, I I'm not a person who has, you know, thousands of pounds anymore, or even hundreds of pounds anymore. Um, so everything helps to keep the channel going. At right. the end of the sure. So um, shoot, I was going to ask you another question. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh, I'll do that. Are you doing T-shirts that have the you making the face that say "Here's Johnny" on them? Because I want yes, that they're, they're in my Teespring store. Oh, they're, really? they're, okay. Yeah, that they're, they're they're up in my Teespring store um, with the uh, the face and says "Here's Johnny." Loads of different colors are available. Yeah, yeah, they're they're in there. I'll have to grab one. And for those of you watching, I'll post a link to to Johnny's Teespring store. Uh, where you can find all his stuff on there, as well as a link to his channel. I know you're, what, at just a skosh under 300 subs right now? Something like that? Yeah, it's 299, I think, as of right now. Um, and, yeah, I, I think it's great that people have subbed and, uh, you know, watch, and uh, hopefully they, they enjoy what I do. Um, I try to inject a bit of humour now and again into it, if I can. Um, and... Yeah, hope, hopefully people like it. I mean, you know, that, that's that's the only sort of reason for doing it, really. Well, um, obviously, two hundred ninety nine people like it so far. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah. 
I should find out who they all are and send them the money that I promised them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same here, man. Only I only have two thirty to to send bribes to, I guess. <laughs> well, you, you, yours will grow, mate. Yours will grow. I mean, I, I know with mine when it when it first started, um, I couldn't, I could not get above one hundred subs at all, and I thought this is it's not really worth it it's just one or two people watching and you know but a couple of people have said to me just keep going just keep going and it will happen and here i am now with uh, almost 300 subs and i'm still doing it <laughs> you know yeah. um, what's been the biggest frustration for you so far do you think um, good question. Um, is it the lack of growth cause, or, or not growing as fast as you want, or is it something else? Or? Um, I think it's um, real support for the channel uh, is a bit frustrating um, because, you know, uh, I hear of all these guys that have their, their Patreon accounts and their, you know, they're getting their two pounds a month or whatever it is uh, off their patrons and then giving something back. And I've tried that. I have one patron um, who is a really good guy. Um, but in order for somebody like me to keep the channel growing and to get gear to review, that takes money. And unfortunately, with my financial situation, that will be very, very slow. Right. Um, I do have a good deal with um, the Faisley brand uh, over at Bats Music. They kindly send me stuff to review. Um, but if I, if I wanted to go to like Harley Benton, for instance, um, they said you need uh, uh, 1,000 subs and uh, at least 1,000 video views before they will consider even sending you their cheapest item to review. Oh, wow. And I, I think, well, if you're only willing to help out the big guys, the people who you're aiming your budget guitars at, who, you know, can't afford everything that the big guys talk about, they probably don't watch all of the big guys. Right. They've got smaller channels. And if you're saying, okay, you have to have a thousand people and a thousand video views or, or whatever it is. Well, okay, yeah, co come back to me in 10 years. I'm, I might be able to, uh, you know, do a deal with them then. <laughs> you know, well, I, John, I you didn't get there before that, dude. Like, you seem like you've been growing pretty quick recently. Um, yeah, I, I think some of that is down to my friend Nick Lloyd uh, getting me these uh, these guitars that he makes that are replicas of the iconic uh, guitars um, because uh, he, he'll turn around and say to me, oh, I've, I've got this, I've got that, um, that I've made. And then I'll sort of think of something, come up with a, a short documentary about that guitar. And uh, people do like watching that. They like seeing the, the story behind the guitar. And then I produce rather comically a, uh, <laughs> that guitar oh, and cool. you know play with it and mess with it and then I reveal that it's actually a copy that's been made um, and I do find that um, my, my tip if you want your videos to go to, to really get views um, Harley Benton every time I do a Harley Benton video it seems to go really well um, the Faisley ones have started doing that now um, uh and the glary ones so, certainly worked out well so it seems when when i'm reviewing something that has got a name about it a little bit of a name about it they go well uh mm -hmm. if i picked up a um a nicky no name guitar pedal um and reviewed that i'd probably only get about 60 or 70 views um but at the end of the day i do this for fun and for something to do. It's not about the money um, because any money I make from this gets put back into the channel. I don't go off and spend it. I buy more gear with it and do yeah. more reviews. Um, but at the end of the day, people don't have to. Um, but I do find it frustrating that I 
put it out and uh, and say, oh yes, you can do this, you can do that, and you don't get anybody talking about it. They don't go onto the t-shirt videos and say, you know, hey, nice t-shirts, I think I'll order one or anything like that. You put the content out, they watch it, they will either like it or not, and that's just it, that's just how it rolls. Well, I mean, keep in mind too, Johnny, because this is something that Mike from CGS and I talked about a little bit, kind of off camera, is that even though you have, like he has a pretty big channel, but his yeah. Patreon subs, I mean, I think last time I checked, he was only getting 120 quid a month and he's got 38,000 subs. Yeah. Uh, I understand like bigger channels like that. And I don't know if Mike does. I haven't talked to him about it, but a lot of the bigger channels will charge companies to do videos for them and stuff too. Yeah. So, you know, once you get to that point, maybe that, that might yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that, well, that's it. I mean, I've, I've you're, spoken to. You're into punk and stuff. Like you could always incorporate videos where you're teaching punk riffs and all that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I could do that. But um, I, I sort of, uh, because of the way I play, um, there's, I, I, I play fifths. I only use my uh, finger here and that finger on the fretboard, you see. Um, do the power chord, the bar chord, because of my arthritis, that is the only sort of way I can play comfortably uh, without uh, being in even more tremendous pain. Um, so I think me doing that would be a pretty boring video by just saying, you know, right, it's here, it's there, it's there, it's there, it's there, there, there. I don't think me teaching guitar is a good way of me going uh so i'd rather just review the the budget end of the equipment the stuff that i can afford and i think that with the current uh, economic uh situation uh, the world finds itself in that i think are going to get bigger and better uh the, the Faisley brand for instance they've uh the first guitar that i had from them absolutely awful absolutely awful it was but now they've got a different factory or two or three different factories that are building for them. They're starting to come up with some real contenders at very good prices. And I think to myself, yeah, I'm going to keep reviewing those because they'll send them to me. I'll review it. If I want to keep one, I might get a good deal on it. Right. So I'm, I'm happy with that. Right. So what's your, I, I know I recently watched your, your video about your five favorite guitars you've reviewed for the channel. What's yeah. your favorite guitar that you actually own? Uh, well, that one is actually over there. And uh, I'll just grab it for you. One sure. second. I'll get it out of the case. It is actually my Joe Strummer. Nice. Uh, which was made by my friend Nick Lloyd. That's a, a set list on there. Okay. Had. And uh, this was actually uh, presented to me on my 40th birthday. Um, and it is a Squire body, an 80 Squire, then a Squire body. Nice. But it's been all uh, done up and I have put in the only change is I put a Seymour Duncan little 59 pickup in the bridge there. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, because I, I like the, the sound of, a, of um, the, the Gibsons, the, the humbuckers. Uh, I, I'm not that keen on the thin telly sound. Um, so I just had that done to it. But yeah, this is, this is the best guitar that I own and uh, the other one which I suppose is joint top with this is my Steve Jones um, Les Paul and that is at the moment at our rehearsal studio because uh, we're rehearsing for a, a gig next month sure. um, but yeah the, this this is my little workhorse I love that that's awesome 
it is. It's, it's a fantastic guitar, absolutely fantastic. A, a bunch of friends uh, all sort of clubbed together uh, to pay for it to be made. And, uh, you know, uh, I, w I wouldn't be without it now. Nice. Uh, I have the other Joe Stromatelli, which is up here on my wall. And that's the other one. Heck yeah. I like uh, that. And uh, again, it has the set list on it there. And this one is a, a, a Squire, but it's all stock 80s Squire. So, uh, yeah, there's that one as well. Nice. I like those. Those are cool. Now, talk to me about how, Johnny, things obviously in the UK have opened back up quite a bit. Yeah. Have you found it harder to be able to get gigs now, or is it about the same before as before stuff got locked down? Um, I think it's gone the same as it was before lockdown. Uh, the band that I've just been, uh, just left, um, we were getting gigs. God, we were getting at least two, three a month. Okay. Uh, and I've just left that band, uh, Voodoo Club, my current band that I've had for a while. We don't gig uh, very much because we're all sort of busy people. Um, but I find that the, the circuit of pub gigs, that there's plenty of those going about. Uh, pub gigs, plenty of it going about. As long as people want to hear what you're playing, then there's plenty. The bigger gigs, um, I think, yeah, I think it has gone back to the way it was before the lockdown. Um, but even then, that saying here in England, the music scene has been dying for quite a while um, because when the smoking ban came in, for instance, a lot of people stopped going to uh, little small gigs because they'd rather stand outside and have a cigarette and they'd miss the band that they've paid to see. So they would then say, oh, well, no, I'll just stay at home. I'll put a record on and, uh, you know, I'll drink very cheaply and I can smoke to my heart's content. Um, and that killed a lot of live music in small pubs and they didn't, the pubs don't really want to pay for live entertainment. So we, we go to them and we say, oh, we'd love to do a gig here. Um, they don't really want to pay what a live band is worth. And I mean, my, my, my band, Voodoo Club, we, we only charge £250 a night. Um, we're worth more than that. But places just do not want to pay for it. They, they really don't. And they don't factor in the cost of the, the, the gear that you're using, uh, the cost of the fuel to get you there and to get you back, uh, the time it takes to set up and all, all of this. Um, and the fact that you're actually spending money in their venues drinking and then you play your gig and you get your money and you think to yourself, well, I, I spent 30 pounds on beer while I was in there and I've made 50 pounds. So I've actually made 20 pounds for four or five hours work. And uh, if, if it weren't for the fact that I, I do love picking my guitar up and playing it and screaming at people, then uh, I, I wouldn't do it if, if I didn't get the pleasure out of it that way. Sure. Now, are enough people that aren't in bands still going to gigs for, for venues to be able to justify paying that is my question. Y yeah. Um, if, if it gets promoted right, then there is enough people. I mean. Um, I would go to a, a small pub anywhere around here if they had a, a rock band on. And even if they charged on the door a couple of pounds, I'd still pay to go in and sure. see what this rock band is like, you know. Um, but 
it's just venues would rather get a band in for free to play and maybe give each member a, a pint of beer for doing it. Yeah, that's or, that's ridiculous, especially if like it's a place that has a built-in crowd already. Yeah. Unless you guys are drawn more, they're gonna more than make that back. Oh yeah, I've I've played many gigs when um the the, the crowds have been um for for a, a Saturday evening in one pub in Redditch where I used to live, I was helping them out um when they were having bands on and they they would book a band uh i believe once they booked a, a nirvana tribute band and they paid out uh something like 380 pounds i think it was to book this band they were very good very professional and i think 10 people showed up but the problem was the pub were having um their own money problems with the actual brewery and they weren't paying the bills for the beer so they were selling cans of lager that they bought from the local shop and people thought well i'm not paying three pounds to go in there and pay three pounds for a can which i could buy from the shop for like one pound and people stayed away so then they had to find a way of paying this band which they, they did fair play to them they paid but i felt bad for the band but then there's been nights where they've had somebody on for free and a lot of people have turned up. But of course, nobody wants to buy beer out of a can in a pub. So that failed because they were not um, paying their bills. Right. And they didn't really have a clue how to run it. Um, but yeah, th th there's enough people out there that, that want to go and see gigs. You just have to give it to them. And I think if venues go with it in mind of like, right, okay, we have to get a live band in, um, pick the band, blah, 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 find out how much they want, and then agree and pay the band, treat the band with respect. Because the band, you don't know, they could have four or 500 people in that town that absolutely love them and will come to see them so that, that that's I, I think it's all down to venues and bands really right. there's enough people there's enough people to go to go out there and see bands and to fill pubs or venues so and have you noticed a like a big difference then between like bands that that play cover songs and bands that play their own original music yeah that's that's something here too. Like people want to go see bands that play the same stuff they hear on the radio all the time. And, and so the yeah. bands that play original music kind of get shit on for lack of a better term. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I, I do see, see that here. Um, I, I, my, my background, as I say, comes from the tribute bands and the, the gigs that we used to do sellouts and, you know, Tribute bands are different, though. Like, I love tribute tribute bands, personally. Yeah, I, I like tribute bands. Um, I don't like Sex Pistols tribute bands. But, um, uh, but a band that's playing stuff that you already know, like my band does, we play all the old punk classics. People know what, the, what they're going to get, and they feel comfortable with that. And sometimes like my my, uh, my partner will say to me oh uh, oh she did it recently there, there was a band that we uh saw in a movie um and they were like a 60s mod type band but with a punky edge and the following day my my partner found out they were playing near to us so she bought tickets and we went to see them and there was two bands on with them that were playing their own original material we'd never heard of them before and they were actually quite good and this other band that they're called the k's they, they were fantastic and they're playing their own songs and they got this room packed but if they were playing in a pub to a room full of people who are there to have a drink oh there's a live band on we'll go and see it and they started playing their own songs 
those people would sit disinterested until they pulled out their cover version of i don't know a rolling stone song right um and i've i've written original material i've i've done four or five albums of original material and um <laughs> apart from a little bit of success in finland they've done nothing <laughs> you know uh but the second i put out a cover version people tend to like it so it's i think the way to, the way to go people like what they know right and they like the comfortability comfortability of it they they would rather pay money to see something they know they're going to enjoy rather than take a punt on something that you know that they've not heard and i do find that quite sad because it does stifle growth of artists but there again i'm part of the problem because i would i would love to go out and see a covers band um over uh, a new artist right so it's kind of double standards there from me i'm afraid yeah i'm i'm opposite i'd rather go see a band that plays all original music and kind of figure out what they're about it it depends on the situation though like here yeah. i'm in iowa which is like dead center of the u.s yeah i mean you've been here you know where we're at probably but there's like there's a really good Foo Fighters tribute band that's from here that I'd yeah. love to go see. There's a good Green Day tribute band. And then there's like a, a cover band that plays like all these radio pop hits that I'm not super crazy about, but I really like all the members, but I wouldn't yeah. pay what they charge to go see them. But then there are all these really great like underground original bands that like I'll go to a show and there'll be three people there and it's like you guys have been playing for five years and your songs are friggin' amazing like yeah it's just sad that you know the lack yeah, of yeah they can't break through yeah 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 but uh, it's funny I you know, say you were funny you say you you're in uh, Iowa you know any Clear Lake are you no um no Clear oh, Lake right. is like pretty far northwest of where I'm at. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Because oh, well, obviously, Buddy Holly, um, you know, and what happened yeah. uh, out there. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty, pretty sad story. Yeah, but, uh, definitely. I, the reason I'm asking is like all of the really good rock and roll bands that I've discovered recently have, or most of them anyway, I'd say at least 90% are all from the UK right right uh and what, what bands have you discovered lately well like scarlet rebels is a big one right wales they're doing really good um uh chapter and verse is from the uk i love them uh false heads is one of my favorite bands that's probably my yeah favorite. I've, I've heard of them i've heard of them okay and then uh gosh who else there's there's a bunch on my spotify i'd have to look it up but yeah the majority of my spotify right now is all bands from the uk and then like i struggle to find similar artists here because everybody here is doing like pop or hip-hop and yeah 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 i, I understand that um i mean yeah that the, there are a, a hell of a lot of good bands uh that are coming from england right now um but i think again they 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 don't get the exposure because of tribute bands and cover bands because of a venue is is going to put on a tribute band or a cover band more than they're going to put on somebody doing completely new music right because the venues want people in through the doors to pay the money and if people are singing along to a song that they know they're going to buy more beer they're gonna you know the atmosphere will be there if there's a new artist which they don't know what they're going to expect and they don't know what they're going to get they 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 tend to just sort of either not bother or they will sit it out or they might they might just sit there looking bored um so i think the the way that 
the music scene has sort of regressed back on itself um and lots of these old bands particularly bands that reform as well i mean we've seen this thing with abba recently you yeah. know they're doing this big uh, this big show in london with all holograms um yeah not something i would want to pay to go and see if they were there in person yes but why does it have to be an old band that is is playing a gig like that why can't there be a new up and coming band for a lot cheaper why can't you go and see that instead of four holograms on a stage right you know? um and that that i have a, a problem with I, I have a problem with some of these old bands that uh like status quo for instance i call them status quo because all of their best bits are not in there anymore um they're they're, they're all gone apart from uh, uh francis rossi so shouldn't it be called the francis rossi band right well dude <laughs> foreigner is the same way like the only original member left in Foreigner is Mick Jones. And when my wife and I went to saw, we saw them this summer. Yeah. Mick Jones was only playing on select certain nights, depending on how he felt. He didn't happen to play the night we went, but the band was still great. Like I love Bruce Watson, but he's not yeah. Mick Jones, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's it. I mean, they, they could, they, they could rename themselves after one of the Foreigner hits, you know? And people would still go right but i don't i don't think you should be calling yourself that band's name if there is isn't at least two of the original band in right. it you know uh because i i do think that is a rip-off but there again that said if if those guys are playing in a venue and there's not one original member in it but there's an up-and-coming band playing um you know a few blocks away which one are people going gonna go to see right they're gonna go and see the one that they know well and like foreigner is one of my all-time favorite bands so naturally yeah. i was gonna go see them anyway but yeah no i totally agree with you um we'll get back to music in a minute i do have a question about the uk one of the things that i absolutely loved over there that we mm -hmm. don't have here is you could take the train absolutely everywhere you wanted to go on top of like the UK being like super magical to people who don't live there because of all the castles and the medieval flavor. Yeah. Stuff. Is that magic still there? And do you like, is the rail transport still just as good and all that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, like you say, you, you can get pretty much anywhere by taking a train and then of course when you get into London you have the underground where you can get to anywhere in in the London area uh, that way um yeah the tra the train system yeah um you can get to where you want to go um i i use trains um when i when i go from my house into actual actual birmingham uh city the center uh i use the train for that um but yeah if you want if you want to go to manchester i can go to birmingham city center jump on a train and go straight up to manchester i could go liverpool um anywhere so yeah that is all there and i think that that is a good thing the only thing i don't like about it is if if i want to go and see a concert in manchester for instance uh i've got to get a hotel because the trains stop at a certain time and it's either miss, miss half the concert to get a train back to birmingham or get a hotel for the okay. night it's it's been 20 years since i've been over there maybe mm -hmm. a little bit more than that i think i was 18 at the or no, I was 15 when my dad took me, and then I went back when I was 17 for marching band. We played in the London New Year's Day Parade. All right. But from what I remember there, at least in Norfolk, where we were at, like Ipswich, Colchester, Sharon yeah. area, it seemed like the trains were going almost 24 hours a day. Yeah, I, I believe that they stop at uh, 
I think uh, it's 11.30, I think. Okay. And then they start again round about 6 a.m. Okay, so uh, that must have changed yeah. since then, because I know, like, when we went over to, to Wales to catch a ferry to go to, to Ireland, um, the train we took over to Wales, we got on at, like, midnight and didn't get there till around 2 a.m. And there were still trains going. So, well, uh, the, the sleeper trains, I believe they used to run sleeper trains for long journeys like oh, that. Okay. Uh, sure. Uh, for, for longer journeys, yeah, they, they, they do still run uh, what they call a sleeper. Um, like to, to go from Birmingham to, to Glasgow, for instance, you get the overnight sleeper. Sure. Um, uh, so yeah, they, they do still run things like that, but uh, for going to a place like Manchester or something, um, no, no, they, they do stop at um, maybe midnight now, uh, thinking about it, and then they reopen again at about 6am the next morning. Okay. I mean, I, well, I, I mean, remember... It's still, still reasonably convenient. Somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I remember work, working on the Sex Pistols 2007 Manchester gig uh, on that, one of their reunion tours, and I'd gone up from Birmingham, uh, got all the way to Manchester, um, met a friend up there. Um, the gig was fantastic. Uh, came away, I took my friend back to the hotel, and then I walked around and realized that I had then missed my train. Oh no. So, so I had to uh, sleep in a doorway <laughs> um, and wait until the train station opened again at six the next morning uh, to get to take another sort of two hour journey to get back to Birmingham. Jeez. <laughs> and I wasn't playing the gig. <laughs> right, you just were a spectator. That's crazy. Yeah. Man. Um, yeah. So are you a, you a Premier League fan at all? Uh, yes, yeah, sort of, yeah. I'm um, Aston Villa. Okay, good. We can be friends then. You're not a, you're not a uh, Tottenham Hotspurs fan. I'm, I'm a huge Gunners fan. Uh, Arsenal, yeah, yeah. Johnny Rotten's a, an, an Arsenal fan. Yeah, and well. so is Ian Poulter, my favorite golfer. Yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not Tottenham Hotspur you know, uh, at all. I, I never could be, <laughs> you know. Um, I'm, I'm Aston Villa. It's the, the one of the local teams uh, uh, to me, obviously. Um, and funnily enough, I actually got my COVID vaccines at their uh, football ground. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, at uh, Aston Villa football ground, yeah. Nice. So uh, let's get back to the music for a little bit then. What... Um... Yep. You know, what's kind of your five-year plan with the channel, do you think? Um, ooh, I think just to keep doing the, the budget gear. Um, I, I don't really want the channel to become one where I'm, I'm reviewing stuff that I couldn't afford. Um, and... I wouldn't want to be doing Fenders and Gibsons and, and things like that because I really think now I've been playing the the budget guitars, I really think some of them are better than Fenders and Gibsons. And hundred percent. Yeah, and I, I don't think you should be spending out, you know, uh, thousands of pounds or thousands of dollars just because it has a Gibson badge or a Fender badge. I would, put, I would put any of my vin seven vintage guitars I own or any of my three Chapmans up against any Fender or Gibson any day. Personally. Yeah, yeah. That's it. I mean, the, the, the one Harley Benton that I have uh, behind me here, uh, that is such a fantastic guitar, and it only retails for £89. And I've used that on stage, and it sounds absolutely fantastic. Um, I, I really can't well, see any, any guitar it. can sound good if it had or play well if it has a proper setup done on it. I mean, hell, even those Glarys, like Glary yeah. sent me those two guitars, and I'm like, back when I worked at music around the early 2000s, guitars in this price range sucked royal, yeah. right? Like all kinds of, and the neck, 
on on the yellow one I had was one of the best necks I have ever felt. And yeah, my, yeah. I was like, oh my God, like the times have totally changed then because this didn't used to be the case. So yeah, I totally hear you, man. Yeah, yeah, that, that that's it. I mean, um, you know, when when I when I was younger, I always I always wanted um a, a strap like Buddy Holly. And I always wanted um then later on I wanted the Steve Jones uh Gibson, you know. And right. I, th I think to myself now, well, yeah, I could buy a, a Buddy Holly style strat for sixty pounds, which you know, okay, yeah, I it would be a, a big chunk out of my money, but it's better than you know paying four hundred, five hundred, six hundred thousand pounds for a Fender Stratocaster. And when when would I actually use it? Apart from me sitting here recording videos of myself playing Buddy Holly songs, or right. I don't play a gig where we're going to do a Buddy Holly song, so I will get that out and, and play on that. Um, so yeah, I don't see my channel going ever down that route of very expensive gear. I just want to keep it to the budget stuff that, you know, everybody can afford at some stage. And even if uh, other companies uh, do come to me and say, would you review this? Would you review that? Like uh, Faisley have done. Um, if I don't like it, I will do the review and I will tell you that I don't like it because they watch my channel and I want them to be watching what I tell everybody. Right. You know, um, to be completely transparent, they, that Faisley will send me stuff to review. If I don't like it, I will, I will tell them, but the review will still go out. And I'll say, look, this is what I think of that one, guys. I'm really sorry, but it just wasn't up to what I think it should be for the price. Right. And, you know, that they can like it or they can lump it. Uh, but. I, I couldn't I couldn't justify, you know, uh, paying out to get a, a Fender guitar and then go, well, actually, I don't like it. It's awful. You know, um, so it's going to be budget equipment all the way. I'm going to do um, some more sort of cover songs until the channel can be monetized. Um, and I will continue putting stuff up on my Patreon for people to download and things like that. Um, more t-shirts as well. I'm trying to get more funny comical t-shirts and things like that um, because all that helps me to buy gear to then review. Right. So it's ju just more of the same for five years, really. And I've, I've just, I've just spoken for five minutes just to come to that answer. No, <laughs> more fine, the same. <laughs> that's, that's totally fine um somebody in in one of the i don't i've never seen you in any of the guitar groups on facebook uh, so i don't know if you're on facebook or not but in the yeah yeah i am yeah okay in the vintage guitar players group that i'm in somebody had mentioned the other day that like on used gear now the bottom is starting to drop out as far as prices go in, over in the uk yeah. you seeing that as well because that is not yeah yeah yeah, not, yeah way overinflated here oh right well yeah the the use gear here and especially on um facebook marketplace as well i've seen uh, a number of uh guitars that I, I do trawl through and yeah that there are some good deals to be had out there uh i'd also advise um to look at the b stock that some of these online companies uh sell because the for being a B stock, that that could mean somebody's had it like myself to review, and then they then sent it back, and because the outer box has gotten damaged in transit, that's why it's a B stock guitar. Uh, I have a, a couple that are B stocks, um, and you generally get, I would say, between uh, maybe fifteen to twenty pounds off the actual price. Um, 
but yeah, the, the used market over here, if you know where to look, you can find a good bargain. That's you really cool. can. Because you know? it used to be like my only hope of finding a Gibson, because I want to get a Les Paul for my birth year, which is 1983. Yeah. The only way I had a snowball's chance in hell of doing that is like if I could find some estate auction out in the middle of Iowa in a town that has that used to have a crazy good music scene. And there are some that exist, but yeah. now it's like even – you know, with everything going online, these estate auctions you used to be able to show up to in person now, everybody can sit there from, you know, five states over and bid on it. So everything gets yeah. bid up. So now it's impossible to find good deals on stuff. And it's super well, Over here, we have a, a, a company called, uh, um, oh, what are their names? Ho uh, Holgate and Gardner. And they're uh, an auction house. And they do, uh, every couple of months, they have a guitar auction. Um, these, th these things, they start from your no-name guitars, um, going up to Fenders, Gibsons, things like that, uh, amplifiers and stuff like that. And me and a, a friend of mine went to one, and we came away with, uh, I think it was about seven or, or eight guitars and uh, four amplifiers. And it only cost uh, something like two hundred and eighty pounds, I believe it was, wow. for the whole lot that we'd bid on. Um, and because they they were cheap guitars um, and cheap cheap amps, cheapy amps, um, we then sold them on eBay um, for a small profit. Um, so that the, these places are good, and you'll also get collections of deceased um, musicians in there when their family realizes that they've got all of these guitars that they want to get rid of because the person's died and you know you, you get things like that in there as well so you, you can get some bargains over here um, those guitar auctions are worth looking into definitely yeah I don't the problem is is where I'm from I mean there's not a big enough scene here to justify that plus we have like five or six people i know of that are flippers and yeah. like three of them aren't even musicians and so anytime there's an estate auction or any type of thing with guitars amps all that they're there at 6 a.m camped out with yeah three or four grand cash in hand they're buying this stuff super cheap you know, whereas I might have an appointment with a client and I can't get there till 10. Yeah. And it's like, I get the first come first serve thing, but I think, I feel like flippers, at least here are also ruining that market. That yeah, yeah. The case. I, I see that a lot with um, record store day as well. Um, because obviously being a, a Sex Pistols fan, they often put something out on record store day and um, I, I can't get to the to the stores for for it on that day. Um, and then I find that <laughs> as soon as the the shop, the store shut uh, at five o'clock, half five, by six o'clock on eBay, people have flipped these record store day records, uh, double, tripled the prices of them. And, you know, everybody's trying to buy one then. So if you're trying to complete your collection, you're, you're not going to get it. And I, I find that sh that stupid. I really, I don't like people who, who flip like that. Yeah. You know, um, and I, I stopped supporting Record Store Day uh, a couple of years ago when I found one local store who was actually uh, allowing uh, his regular customers in the day before and letting them pick what they wanted and keeping them aside for the next day. So if I'd queued up for eight hours outside of his store and I wanted a certain album, um, he will have already sold it the day before. Yeah. And that is, of course, illegal. Uh, so that I don't like at all. And there's, there's a pedal company, and I know that, that the owner of the company hates this, but Chase Bliss Audio here in the U.S., 
they've had a couple pedals where people buy them launch day, right? No intention of actually using them, and then they'll sit there and try and sell them on reverb for four times what they go for for yeah. people that are actually Chase Bliss fans. I, to me, like I get capitalism, but that's just mm -hmm. great greed, man. Like, yeah, yeah, that, that's correct. Yeah, yeah, that, that that's what it is. I'm I'm not against anybody earning a book, right? But if it's at the expense of the people that really want that thing, that item, then I think that that's that's not right. It, it should it shouldn't be that way. Well, you know, if, the if problem I had a guitar, is there a system of checks and balances for it is the problem. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if let, let's, let's say, for instance, you wanted one of these Joe Summer guitars, right? And I said to my friend, okay, can you build one of those? And I would take the cost of what it was to build, the cost it is to ship, and that is the cost you would get. I wouldn't sort of sit there and go, okay, it's cost him um, £160 to build this. So before shipping, you're going to pay £400. Right. There's no way I could do that, you know. It would be a case of it's cost him £160 to build. It's going to cost £50 to ship it. That's what you'll pay. Because right. No, I could see going like... If you're going to flip something, buying it, and then flipping it for like 10% more than what you paid for it. I'm yeah, totally, that's fine. I'm totally cool with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and again, with, with the, uh, the Steve Jones Gibson Stick Signature Series, when that came out, um, it was uh, just over $3,000 to buy one of those. Uh, now you're looking at £6,000 for a used one. Yeah, same with the Adam Jones signature, the dude from Tool that just came out with that silver burst. Yeah. There, there, some rich guy came in and bought like eight of those, flipped them all on reverb for 18, 20 grand a piece. And it's like, yeah, just straight greed, man. It, it, it is, it is, you know. So somebody give Harley Benton a call and tell them to do one that looks like it. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Cool, man. Well, I don't, I don't really have any other questions for you. I appreciate you coming on. And for those of you watching, if you have not subbed to Johnny's channel yet, please do. Again, I will post a link in the description. He has some great stuff. He reviews gear that anybody of any financial situation can afford. And that's what I like about your channel. So thank you. Yeah. That, that's that's what I try to do, mate. And um, you know, I, I love your channel too. And uh, in fact, uh, what we'll do is we'll set something up next week like this, and I'll get you on my show. Okay. Uh, and uh, because you know, uh, if if uh, people who are watching this and they found it because they subbed to me, uh, you better go over and give this man some love. Oh, cool. Thanks. Go over and do it. Um, you know, I think we we're, we're all in this together. Uh, I, I believe we're all in this together. We're not competing with each other. We're just giving our own opinions of of what we do. Right, and, well, you know, and that's it. You know, and that's um, one of the things I found about this community that I'm astounded by in a good way. Like usually, and my other hobby, Johnny, is I'm a giant tabletop gaming nerd. So like. All right. Get miniature board games where you like roll dice and cast spells at people and yeah, yeah. A level nerd stuff, right? And the YouTube community for that seems to be very, very cutthroat. And I have not seen that at all here with the guitar. Yeah, I, I find that. I mean, I, I, I'll, re I'll review a guitar and then I'll find out that uh, somebody else reviewed the same guitar and probably went a bit deeper into the specs and this and that and the other that I did. But I, I will sit and watch the video and I'll give it a thumbs up and I will say, yeah, fair play, you know. Um, there's, there's no need for anybody to be cutthroat or against each other in, in this world. We, we all provide entertainment for all of us. Yeah. And that's how it should be. You know, if if you if you turn around and say, "Oh, well, I need help for my channel uh, on this, that, or this," all you gotta do is give me a holler, 
and you know i hope that's the same with me and other people and you know that's how i like to that's how i like to be yeah, yeah. and i'm the same way and everybody in this community i talked to so far has been that exact same way and that's awesome that's it yeah absolutely brilliant absolutely brilliant and i do i do wish your channel the, the most fantastic success i oh, really do because you, you, you're, you're like me you're, you're you're in your room you're doing your your thing and that's that's all we can do entertain right, right. cool well for those of you watching, as always, thank you so much for watching and have fun playing. <laughs>